everyone welcome back to my channel 5 minute economics where i teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes the topic for today is income elasticity of demand well this topic is a very interesting topic studied at the college level and also at the school level well if you are part of school which is maybe or junior college which is class 11th and 12th i have some very interesting news for you guys well asia stock college which is shiram college of commerce is organizing its national economics olympia 2022 well this is an opportunity which you shouldn't miss at all guys the last date to register is 3rd november you can also use my coupon code which is vidhi20 to register and you can win cash prizes worth 65000 rupees and even if you don't win well you will definitely get a certificate participation certificate from india's most prestigious college so there is an opportunity which you shouldn't miss if i was in school i would have definitely taken part in this olympiad other details regarding the olympiad i'll attach in the comment section below so don't forget to check them out guys so coming back to my topic well often i've spoken about price elasticity but in today's video i'll be talking about income elasticity where i'll be discussing about zero greater than lesser than and all the types of elasticities which come under the head of income elasticity so let's get started guys also guys don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel in case you haven't already so first let me tell you what exactly is income elasticity of demand well the degree of responsiveness of demand to the changes in the income level is known as income elasticity of demand when we were talking about price guys we were seeing that when the price of a commodity rises or falls how does the quantity demand change right but in this case completely forget price or just keep that aside in one place in your mind and now coming to income now because if you keep price in your mind then definitely you will cause a lot of confusion so we are talking solely about income that is jab hamari income change hoti hai we are, you know increasing falling whatever how does our demand gets affected so here is the formula which you all should know because for numerical point of view this is very important which is ey elasticity of income is change in percentage uh, between in quantity demanded upon percentage change in income okay here is the chain otherwise price ke case mein we would have put price so this is the formula which you should know for numerical point of view well guys there are three types of income elasticities of demand which i'll be explaining in my video today negative zero and positive so i hope you are clear with this so firstly guys coming to negative income elasticity well starting about negative income elasticity we should know that when demand falls with an increase in income and demand rises with a fall in income it is known as negative income elasticity in worst relation right well you might say when does this happen because according to us we might always think that jaise our income increases our consumption increases right right we are coming richer we will buy more things the demand rises but in in negative income elasticity especially in the case of inferior goods we are moving opposite now guys don't get it confused with given goods given goods and inferior goods are totally different in fact i made a video on types of goods in case you are interested you can go and watch it out and clear your doubts first and inferior good i always say the yardstick to measure an inferior good is income okay there is no way we are calling it price okay so please guys remember that because i know many students tend to get confused so here we know that in case of inferior goods guys our demand and you know the income they both work in opposite directions why for example uh, our income rises we tend to switch to a superior good let me talk about television now supposing we are earning less and we are watching on black and white television of course when our income increases we will reduce the consumption we will not buy a black and white television but now we will buy a color tv because our affordability has risen so the demand for that good that black and white tv will fall while for the superior good which is a you know color tv will rise so that black and white tv is basically an inferior good in our scenario and we see that we move in opposite direction exactly same has been explained through a graph we have quantity demanded on the x axis and income on the y axis initially our income is i and our quantity demanded is q but supposingly our income rises you know we move from i to i dash our quantity demanded falls from q to q dash why because now we are switching to a superior good whereas in case where our income falls you know supposedly something happens and our income has fallen now our affordability has also fallen so our demand for the inferior good will rise in that case again we will have a you know a uh, increase in the quantity now you see i uh, i double dash our income is falling and our quantity demanded is rising if we join these guys 
this all these dots we get a negatively sloping demand curve which is dd and why is it negatively sloping because there is an inverse relationship between the Two. Moving ahead to our next type of elasticity, which is zero income elasticity. Well, guys, when quantity demanded remains unchanged with the changes in income, it is known as zero income elasticity of demand. Well, zero means unchanged, right? Like something zero, it has no effect. So even if our income rises or even if our income falls, we have no effect in our quantity demanded. It is the case of inexpensive goods of necessities like maybe salt, matchbox, newspaper, where we spend a very little proportion of our income. So even if our income rises, we wouldn't start consuming a lot of salt. Or even if our income falls, you know, we wouldn't stop using salt. So that way it really has no effect on the consumption. Again, we can see this graphically, guys. Initially, I and Q are our income and quantity demanded respectively. Then we see our income rises from I to I dash. We see that the demand, quantity demanded still remains the same. Whereas if our income falls from I to I double dash, we come down on this red line. Again, our quantity demanded remains the same at point Q. So if we join these dots, we get DD, which is our um, demand curve, which is a straight line parallel to Y axis, also known as a perfectly inelastic curve, you can call it. So in this case, we see that income has no effect on quantity demanded. And I hope you're clear with this. Moving ahead to a third type of elasticity, which is positive income elasticity. Now, positive income elasticity basically, guys, has three types. Greater than, less than, and unitary. So now I'll be explaining greater and less than simultaneously, and then I'll come to the unitary income elasticity. So here, guys, as the name suggests, when the change in demand is greater than the change in income, it is known as greater than unitary elasticity. Supposedly, what happens is, that our income rises very little, but the quantity demanded rises by a lot. In that case, guys, we notice that, you know, uh, we have a very flattish curve. Well, in this case, also, before I tell you the shape of these curves, remember that positive income elasticity is showing direct relationships. So it will be like, you can call the shape of a supply curve, how we have, you know, uh, this way, not downward sloping, how it was in negatively income elasticity, because there is a direct relationship, you know, income rises, our quantity demanded also rises, but you know, the proportion is different. That's why we have three types. So here we see we have income at I and quantity at Q. Supposedly our income rises a very little amount to I dash, but our quantity demanded increases to Q dash. That is where we see that quantity is increasing by much more margin than the income. And in this case, we have a flattish curve. Supposingly, in this case, now demand changes in a less than proportion manner to the changes in income level. You would change in income, but hardly any change in the quantity demanded. So in this case, we notice I and Q are our initial income and quantity demanded. We notice as the income rises from I to I dash, our quantity demanded increases from Q to Q dash. Now you see this whole chunk is quite huge. Whereas this is a very small increase. When we join the dots, we get a very erect shape demand curve. So these are the two types of positive income elasticity. Now guys, moving ahead to the last type of income elasticity under positive income elasticity, where we are talking about unitary elasticity. Well, if you are smart enough, I'm sure you will already understand what I'm going to be talking about. The change in quantity demanded is equally proportional to the change in income. How much our income rises? exactly that amount our quantity demanded rises. So we can see this graphically also guys. Here we see I and Q are our initial income and quantity demanded. Well, our income increases from I to I dash and our quantity demanded increases from Q to Q dash. You can see a very similar kind of increase in both the things. We join the dots, we get this demand curve, which is DD. So exactly what unitary elasticity means, jitna our income badegi, utna quantity demanded hoga and vice versa. So that is all about the income elasticity video, guys. I hope this video was useful for you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Pretty.